Well, good morning, everybody. This is your, I mean to startle some of you, this is your two-minute warning until we start service. So if you need to get those last uh, remarks into your friends, you can do that now. We want to remind you of a couple of things before service starts. First and foremost, we have bathrooms located on both ends of the, the facilities. The building is closed, but the bathrooms are open. So yes. if you need to go to the restroom before the beginning of service, we have an attendant out to my right, your left, and out to my left, your right, over by the kids' wing. Um, those will be open throughout the entirety of service. But the two-minute mark sounds like a really good time mm. uh, to go if you don't want to miss out on anything. That is very true, if you can go quickly. Um, if you're listening in your cars this morning or if you're on the outskirts, good morning. Remember, our station to listen this morning is 91.1. You can turn to 91.1 to listen through our FM broadcast this morning. And if you are listening through your broadcast or if you are in these seats and need song lyrics, we know you guys like to sing along with our amazing worship team. Uh, if you would like a physical copy of the lyric sheets, you can turn on your hazards. You can wave down some of our volunteers. They're going to be going around with the lyric worship sheet. So if you need the lyrics to the songs that we're going to be singing this morning, uh, our volunteers are going to be going around with those. So turn on your hazards, wave them down. They'll be walking through um, the cars and they'll see you. Also, those are available in your MVCN Life app. So if you have our app and you would like to get our lyrics, it's under the This Sunday tab. So you open it up, you go to This Sunday, and it's right there under Sermon Notes. It says Song Lyrics. So you have a couple different ways. So you have no excuse not to be singing along this morning. And just as a final reminder, we do have water at our sanitation station. So Ice that's cold. what we have for you. Service is about to start. So if you find your plushy car seat or your nice um, nosebleed section seats, we're about to get started. Hey everybody, so glad to see you here today and not see you, but know that you're here. Um, we're ready to sing together. We were talking this morning about the privilege. It's such a privilege to come together and worship together. There is power when the body of Christ lifts up the name of Jesus together. That's where the healing begins. That's where God comes in and blesses you and touches your life. No matter what your circumstances are, because they're varied, aren't they? So let's pray together. Lord, we love you. We are so thankful, God, for your love and your faithfulness to us, and we're here together to celebrate that, to praise your name. God, to give you room to work in our lives and minister to us. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's sing about the great things that he has done. Worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Of heaven, you conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great. You've been faithful. You've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful through evermore. You have done great things. And I know you will do it again. For your promises 
Jesus, yes, and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom. Awake and alive, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Sing that again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You freed every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things, you have done great things, God. Can we be in agreement together that God has done great things, he's doing great things, and he will do great things. Can I get some clapping? How about some car horns? Yep, let them rip. Thank you, Lord. All right, once again, good morning. As always, it is great to see you guys on this lovely Sunday morning. It really is. It's beautiful. It really is. Absolutely beautiful. So a couple things to remind you, as always, just as we get into this. Um, first of which, we have a couple extra seats open up here. So if you're in your car and you're looking at these people and you're like, wow, that seems really nice, being out in the fresh air in the open around people, you can certainly join us. There's seats over here. There's a couple over here. Um, if you do, we do ask, of course that you remember to wear your mask. And those of you who are in the front here, um, welcome, great to see you. A lot of you have sunglasses on. Um, please remember to wear your mask before, during, and after the service just At so all you can times. all remain safe. Yeah. And for those of you watching online, we wanna say a special welcome to you guys. Uh, if you're not getting sunburnt <laughs> and you're sitting on your couch, we also wanna say happy Sunday morning to you guys. So we have a couple announcements. First of all, we have partnered with the Thurston County Food Bank, and we've heard some incredible stories of the families and uh, the individuals yeah. that we've been able to bless and help through uh, that being a location here on our very own campus. So mm -hmm. we've partnered with them, but we cannot be, we can't make that possible without your guys' help, and we're going to need continued volunteers for that. So if you would like to get plugged in and be a part of what God's doing through Mountain View and the Thurston County Food Bank, you can sign up through the This Week at Mountain View email, or you can contact Pastor Kelly, and she will get you plugged in and let you know the dates and times that we need you guys to be available for that food bank volunteer ministry. So just as a reminder, for those of you in your cars, we are tuned to 91.1 this morning. You can turn to that FM station and hear us crisp, crisp, I was like crisple. Crystal clear Crispy. through your radio this morning. Um, also, if you need the song lyrics, as a reminder, oh, we do have some people passing out the song lyrics. If you need some, kind of flag them down or get somebody's attention. We have those printed out, and we also have those on the app. And how do you get to the app? It's under the, it's MVCN Life. You can do that on your Apple or Android device, MVCN Life. And then you go under the This Sunday tab, and there, under the This Sunday tab, you'll have your sermon notes and your song lyrics and everything you need for a regular Sunday morning here at Mountain View. Also, just as another reminder, uh, our giving options are still available. So if you usually do online giving, that's fantastic. You can continue to do that. If you brought your giving with you this morning, uh, we will have a bucket at the exit way, which is going to be over here this morning. As you leave, you can drop that off. So 
uh, next Sunday, mm. August 9th, we are going to be having an assessment report service. That's going to be a Sunday night, and that's going to be following Pastor Lonnie preaching with us that Sunday morning. So next week, uh, Pastor Lonnie, who is with the New Church Specialties Program, which we are partnering with in our search for a new pastor and to assess our church as a whole, he's going to be preaching here next week. And then following that, that evening, Sunday evening, is going to be the assessment report where we share with the congregation what New Church's Specialties and the TIPS program has found out about our church um, as they've been doing evaluations, as you guys have been filling out surveys. We get to hear now what that report came back with, which I'm really excited for moving forward into the future and figuring out who we are as a church, our strengths, our weaknesses, what God has done and what God is going to continue to do. So that is going to be Sunday evening next week. So uh, some information went out on that for uh, on the This Week at Mountain View email, and we're going to continue to send out information this week leading up to that service. Yep. So essentially that is going to be live streamed um, on our church online platform, which we got into a little bit before we started doing outdoor services. Mm -hmm. And so that is going to be MVCN dot church dot online dot online dot church online dot church mvcn dot online dot church so but again we'll be we'll be giving more information on that um as we get a little bit closer as a final reminder um remember we have bathroom facilities open on either side of me those are limited um so if you need to go to the bathroom that is fine just not everybody at once please um and then we pray for you guys on monday mornings during yes. staff meetings so if you have any prayer requests for us um, you can email us at the church office, or you can call us, or you can just get a hold of one of us who has these fancy little nameplates on, um, and we will be sure to pray for you on Mondays. That's it, guys. All right. Well, we hope you continue to enjoy the service this morning as we continue to worship the Lord. I'll bet you wish you could do announcements. I just got to take off the mask. Exciting. Good morning, my friends. It is so good to be with you. I'm Becky Swain, and I am not on staff here at Mountain View. I'm just one of you, a person that loves my church, a person that supports my church. And um, we as a church board recently met and Rusty Horton, who could not be here today, who is in charge of um, our missions program, he shared a really cool story with us and we just felt like it would be really good for you guys to hear it. So I'm not here to ask for money, I, which I normally am. I'm going to stand real still so I don't do whatever it is I'm doing. But uh, I'm not going to ask for money. I wanted to share with you what the money that you are giving, a small part of what it is doing. Many of you know about the organization within the Church of the Nazarene. It used to be called Sun Valley Indian School. It is now called the Nazarene Native American Christian Academy down in Arizona. I don't know how many of you have ever gone to work down there. If you want to raise your hand, honk your horn, if you've ever gone there... All right, we have had people that have invested their lives in this great organization down uh, in Arizona. Imagine our worst day this last week, how hot it was, and I'm a wimp, I have air conditioning. I just went from air conditioner to air conditioner all day long this week. Sun Valley, or now the Native American Christian Academy, doesn't have air conditioning in their school, which is... All right, when you get to take the summer off and they maybe are used to being a little warmer in those classrooms in the fall, but with all of the coronavirus, COVID going on, they have had to extend their school year and they are going to be meeting this summer and they don't have air conditioning. And to top that off on that is they also have windows that basically are terrible. So we as a congregation here, through our missions arm of our church, gave $8,250 to replace 40, 40 non-functioning windows at the Nazarene Native American Christian Academy. And you know that's going to make a huge difference. Problem is it's still not air conditioning. 
We are waiting on word to find out what the total would be to help kind of throw in some more money to help with giving them some air conditioning within the building. So this week, as you go through your day, as you're in your car and you have air conditioning, as you are in your place of business and you have air conditioning, as you go into your homes and if you have air conditioning, use it as a time to pray for this whole need for them. I think it'd be a great idea that if we cover it in prayer, whether we as a church um, are able to do something about it, I'm, I'm not on the missions council, so I'm just saying I'm, I'm not speaking for them on that, but I think we need to be praying about it for them so that that need is covered for them also. So I just want to applaud you. I asked Rusty, I said, do you want me to encourage people to be giving, to whatever? And he said, the missions giving of this church has remained steady. And we are covering the budget, the expenses that we lined out before all of this ever hit. And I just want to say, thank you. You make that an easy thing for us on the church board when we help make decisions, when the missions uh, council makes decisions. Because you guys are faithful in your giving, we're able to continue to give out. So God bless you. Keep it up, and praise the Lord for 40 functioning windows. All right, let's continue to worship the only king forever. Our rock, the only solid ground As nations rise and fall Kingdoms once strong, now shaken We trust forever in your name The name of Jesus We trust the name of Jesus you are the only king forever. Already God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever, forevermore. You are victorious, unmatched in all your wisdom. In love and justice you will reign, and every knee will bow. We bring our expectations. Our hope is anchored in your name, the name of Jesus. We trust the name of Jesus forever. Almighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore, forevermore. Are the only king forever almighty god we lift you higher you are the only king forever forevermore forevermore we lift our banner high we lift the name of jesus from age to age you reign your kingdom has no we end lift. we lift our banner high we lift the name of Jesus from age to age you reign your kingdom has no end you are the only king forever almighty God we lift you higher you are the only king forever forevermore forevermore you are the only king forever almighty God we lift you higher you are the only king forever, forevermore. You are victorious, victorious. He's the only king forever, and he is the fount of every blessing. No, every blessing that we have comes from 
his streams of living water, his fountain that overflows with love and blessings for us. And I don't know about you, but it's really good to sing that and remind each other of that today because then we go home and real life hits, our trials and our temptations, and our kids start bugging us, or our spouse, or we go back to work and it's really tough. And God has been reminding me this week, Kelly, you can have peace in me right now. You can have joy in me right now, even when you're not feeling joyful or things are going on or it's 2020. That's enough to suck the joy right out of your life, isn't it? But it's so good to be here together to sing these songs. Remember that our fount of every blessing comes from him and we can have peace and joy in his presence right now despite whatever it is we're going through, because that is his gift to us. So let's sing together, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Come Thou Fount. of every blessing to my heart to sing thy praise streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious sonnet some by claiming tongues of love Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Sing, I was lost in utter darkness. I was lost in utter darkness, till you came and rescued me. I was bound by all my sin when your love came and set me free. Now my soul can sing a new song. Now my heart has found a home. Now your grace is always with me and I'll never be alone. To grace, how great a debtor. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor. Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Home to wander, Lord, I feel it. Rome to thee. The God I love, use my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Come thou fount, come thou fount, come thou king, come thou precious prince of peace, hear your bride to you. Thou fount of our blessing, come thou fount, come thou king, come thou precious prince of peace, hear your bride to you we sing, come thou fount of our blessing.
our moment to pause in our service to listen to and talk to our Heavenly Father. Jesus taught us to call him Father. He taught us to invite his kingdom to come and his will to be done. And so let me invite you to sit quietly for a moment and talk to your Father who longs to hear your voice. And then we're going to invite him to speak to us. Father, across this parking lot, we offer up to you our praise and our thanksgiving. Thanks for being in our lives. Thanks for meeting us this week and all of the circumstances and places that we have gone. What a comfort it is for us to know that we do not journey alone. And so through song, we have been lifting our praise and declaring you to be king. And now in our prayers with open hands of thanksgiving and joy, we just present our gifts to you today. Thanks for giving us life. Thanks for giving us the provision we need to make it in this life. Thank you for your constant loving care of all of us and everything. And Father, now we need to hear from you. We come as a gathered people. We've heard this week of death, of hospice, of sick bodies, of troubled hearts. We are a praying people, and we've been asking your spirit to be at work in our congregation and and yet, Father, there are so many things we do not know about, but you do. And so, as the gathered people of God, in this moment, we want to make our needs known to you. You told us to pray for daily bread. You told us to be a forgiving and a forgiven people. I know, Lord, right now, gather up across this place the cries, the needs, the waiting to hear your voice, to speak into our circumstances, to give us not only your help, but also to give us your hope. We are a hope-filled people as we follow you. Thank you, Lord, that we can gather. As has been expressed today, it's, it's a delight to be able to come at least this far together. And Lord, we just want to say thank you for this opportunity and pray blessing upon all who are here as well as blessing to all of those still in their homes who are joining with us. Thanks for making us your people. Thank you for putting us in this place at this time and give us eyes to see the harvest field around us. Let us be people of compassion and let us be bearers of the good news of the transforming grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that is at work in our world. So Father, these are good moments to talk to you, to hear from you, and to say, your kingdom come, your will be done. For unto you is the glory and the honor and the praise forever. You are the one we adore, and you are the one we seek to follow. So would you guide our steps, that we always would be, day in and day out, the people of God, bearing witness to the love and to the grace that you have bestowed upon us. Continue with us as we sing yet again, and then open the word together. May your spirit be faithful to talk to us this day. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
sing as morning dawns. As morning dawns and evening fades, you inspire songs of praise that rise from earth to touch your heart and glorify your name. It's a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nations sing it louder. Cause nothing has the power to say. But your name. in your name. shelter like no one, your name, let the nation sing it louder, cause nothing has the power to say, but your name. strong and mighty town. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nation sing it louder. Cause nothing has the power to say. Sing it out, your name. But your name is a strong and mighty town. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nation sing it louder. Nothing has the power to say but your name. Well, once again, it's a pleasure for me to have the privilege to stand before you to open the Word of God. And there goes my stand again. If I was just shorter, that would work really well. Do we have another one I could borrow? Maybe this guy would be a bit stiffer. All right. Go with me to John chapter 10, if you would, please. We are working with the I Am statements of Jesus. It is my desire in these days to have opportunity for us to hear what he has to tell us about himself. And we make discoveries, but sometimes the best discoveries are when he just opens his mouth and talks to us. So today I want to pick up in John chapter 10, and I want to start reading in verse 7. I tell you the truth, Jesus said, I'm the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate, and whoever enters through me will be saved. 
He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he, the wolf comes, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and he cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep. My sheep know me just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I have received from the Lord. You heard two phrases in there this morning. I am the gate and I am the good shepherd, and I want to deal with both of them today. To get started in chapter 10, we've really got to go back to chapter 9 because the story that's there sets up everything Jesus had just said to the people and to us. In chapter 9, there is a healing miracle that creates quite a stir. There's a man who was born blind. And Jesus came and he found him and he made some mud and he put it on his eyes. And he said to the man, I want you to go to the pool of Siloam and there I want you to wash. And the word tells us that when he was obedient to Jesus, he suddenly could see. And with his newfound eyesight, Jesus was nowhere to be found. But Jesus heard about what had happened because there was confusion that was going on. The people had come and said, are you the man that was born blind? And some said, no, he just looks like him. They didn't expect a miracle like this. And because of it, they had a hard time receiving it. And finally, the unnamed man spoke up and says, it is me. I am the one who was blind. Now I have the ability to see. And they said, how did it happen? And he said, have you ever heard of the man named Jesus? And so they told, he told them how it had all happened. And when they asked him, where is Jesus? He said, I don't know. And they took him to the Pharisees and he told his story one more time, how Jesus had put the mud on his eyes and how he'd washed it off and he could see. And what should have been a moment of marvelous celebration, the blind have seen. Now, you got excited a little bit today singing a song, but if today I'd have brought somebody right here who hasn't seen their entire life and they could suddenly see, I think we'd have a party. But they did not have a party in John chapter 9. In fact, things turned ugly. The Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he broke the Sabbath law. And other people pushed back and said, how can you do miracles like this and be a sinner? And so the word just tells us the people were divided. And the Pharisees, wanting to destroy the reputation of Jesus, pursue this story. And they visit the man's parents and they say to them, is this your son? And was he blind? And they replied, oh, yes, that's our son. And oh, yes, he was blind. But how he can see, you ask him. He's of age. And then parenthetically, we read in the Gospels, they were afraid because these were very powerful men. And the religious leaders return to the man and they offer him simple instructions and say to him, give glory to God, not to Jesus, because Jesus is a sinner. And the reason we know that Jesus is a sinner is because he broke the Sabbath law. And then if you have your Bibles open, you need to look at verse 25 of chapter 9 because one of the greatest responses in all of Scripture is found right there. This man said, I don't know if he is a sinner or not, but one thing I do know, I was blind 
and now I can see. Praise be to God. And so what did the Pharisees do? They had a little more discussion, and then they threw him out of the synagogue. Well, when Jesus heard the story, he came looking for the man. And it's interesting in the end of chapter 9 that Jesus does for the man what the Pharisees wanted him to do for them. They wanted him to answer the simple question, are you the Messiah or aren't you? And Jesus won't give them a clear answer because they really don't want to believe. They just want to debate. And Jesus made it very clear that day to the seen man who he was. I am the Messiah, he said. And in verse 38, we see the man's response. He believed and he worshiped. Well, Jesus wasn't done talking, so he raised his voice just a little bit so everybody around could hear him. I'll let him go on by. There we go. He raised his voice so everybody could hear. And he said, that my work among you exposes you. Some people who are blind get their sight back. And some people who think they can see clearly suddenly find out they are blind. And the Pharisees who overheard it challenged him and said, surely we are not blind, are we? And Jesus strongly hints that they are, and we come to chapter 10. It's here that Jesus launches into this teaching about shepherd and sheep. And we find the next two I am statements. I am the gate and I am the good shepherd. Shepherds are often looked down on. If you read the book of Samuel, he came one day to Jesse's house to anoint the next king. And there were seven sons there and he was sure one of them would be king. He went through the whole line and none of them were the right one. And he said to them, do you have another brother? And they think, oh, yeah, as an afterthought. There's little David. He's the runt. And he's not worth a whole lot because, well, we sent him out to take care of the sheep. You see, being a shepherd was a profession that was highly necessary because the people needed the wool. But the lonely days and the long nights out in the harsh elements made it a job without much esteem in the wider culture. It is really something that the first people who heard that the Savior had been born in Bethlehem were shepherds. They should have been the last to get the news. But somehow God has a special place in his heart for the shepherds. And they were told first. And I think the reason the shepherds are so valued is because of the characteristics that they develop in the work that they do. Shepherds know how to care. Shepherds protect. Their care is so personal that sheep respond to them. There's only one voice that sheep will listen to, and it is their shepherd. And the protection is so valiant that stories circulate among the people that there are times when shepherds risk their lives and sometimes even lose their lives for the sake of the sheep. So it's really no wonder that when Israel had kings, God had one picture that he wanted the kings to be like. Kings should lead like shepherds. Kings should be those who have a personal interest in those that they rule. They care more about the people they serve than about their own interest. And so throughout the First Testament, you see over and over that the picture of a king is a good shepherd. Shepherd, the very word evokes probably a verse in your heart and in your mind. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. A great picture in scripture of the shepherd. But when we turn it around and talk about sheep, and this morning that's who we are, folks. We're the sheep. The picture isn't quite as good. I don't know if you've ever studied about sheep. But you will often read this when you look it up. They are among the dumbest animals on the planet. 
And it's a little hard for me to stand in front of you, but I would remind you that I am one of you and say, we are the sheep. But I was amused this week when I read about a conversation that Barbara Brown Taylor had with a sheep herder who grew up in the middle of America. We have many places across the country where sheep are still tended. And she met a guy who had spent his growing up years with sheep. And he, he said to her on this occasion that sheep are not dumb. I was glad to hear that. And then he said these words, and I want to read them because I want to be sure I say them right. Cattle ranchers are responsible for spreading the ugly rumor because sheep don't behave like cows. Cows are herded from the rear by hooting cowboys with cracking whips, but that will not work with sheep at all. And then he goes on to say, Stand behind them, making loud noises, and all they will do is run around behind you because they prefer to be led. You push cows, you lead sheep. They will not go anywhere that someone else does not go first, namely their shepherd. The shepherd goes ahead of them to show them that everything is all right. Now, I like that. You can't drive sheep. You can only lead them. And I've been giving that some thought this week. That maybe one of the ways to look at leadership in Scripture is the Pharisees are cowboys and Jesus is a shepherd. Now, I've got to be careful with that because I'm probably talking to a few cowboys I got a friend who has hundreds of cattle over on the Idaho-Washington border. He's a good cowboy. But it seems to me that as I look in on chapter 9 of John, that what Jesus is really saying to the Pharisees, you are driving people. You drove this man right out of the synagogue because Jesus did a good thing for him on the Sabbath day with whips and taunting and power, and pressure, they drove him out. But when Jesus describes the sheep pen in the opening of chapter 10, he starts talking about robbers and thieves who mistreat the sheep, and their influence that Jesus is talking about is both past history and present history, because religious leaders often are people who drive folks, and in the driving, they do more harm than they ever do good. And I want to hear Jesus today. He said, I'm the gate. I'm at the entrance of the sheep pen. I care about my sheep. I let them in and I take them out. My voice is one that gives them confidence and hope. But other voices, and even yours, religious leaders, only add stress and anxiety and they run away. I have come to bring life. It is a full life. In fact, it's a life better than people could ever imagine possible. And then he says, for the first time, I am the good shepherd in verse 11. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Hired hands flee if a wolf comes, because all they think about is themselves. And you religious leaders act like a hired hand. You think about your own skin. You're wondering about your standing in the community and your reputation and your well-being. And you look at this man and he seems expendable. Oh, let's stop there for a moment. You look at this man and think he is expendable. That's easy for us to do on this journey through life. We see people different than us, do things different than we do, believe things that aren't on our radar. And if we're not careful, we dismiss them as expendable. But not this Jesus. I'm the gate. I bring people in and I help people get out. His is an openness to all of humanity. He says it again in verse 14. I'm the good shepherd and I lay down my life for the sheep. 
And if the Pharisees weren't so deaf and so blind, they could hear the answer to their big question. Because here Jesus is declaring, I am the Messiah. Just look at what I'm doing. I healed a blind man. That's what Messiahs do. And if you listen carefully, I am declaring to you that I'm the king. Jesus has come to be the king of all. He has come to be a king shepherd who loves the sheep who cares for the sheep, who even dies for the sheep. And in verse 16, he enlarges his embrace. He said, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen, and I've got to bring them in also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Religious leaders, why are you making it so hard for people to come into the kingdom of God? And if I can make one declaration of my deep heart cry and my prayer is that Mountain View Church will never be a place where it's hard for people to come into the kingdom of God, but that with our Lord, we will always enlarge our embrace and say we want to love and protect and minister to and care for people. Amen. Don't make it hard for people to come into the kingdom of God. As I've lived with this passage all week, I have really been struck by the word voice. It's scattered throughout chapter 10. And I want to be sure this morning that we all understand that the good shepherd is a speaking shepherd. Verse 27 says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. The voice of Jesus is a powerful and a freeing voice. Underline the word freeing. He sets people free. He finds people in all kinds of bondage. He finds people confused and lost and scattered. But he always comes to bring this freeing word to us all. The 27th verse, he says, they listen, they know me, and they follow me. I need to paint a picture for you today of the sheep. Because sometimes they were a mixed up mess. The shepherds would take their flock. They may not be very big in different places, but come towards the end of the day, there was one watering hole. And all of the shepherds and all of the sheep would gather, and there could just be a large covering all around the well of the sheep. And when they'd all had time to get the refreshment that they so desperately needed, one by one, the shepherd would step forward And whatever his sound was, it could be a word, it could be a click of the tongue. Some would even play a little um, note on a, a musical instrument. Every shepherd had a distinct way of communicating. But when the sheep that were part of his flock heard it, they got up and followed. The same would happen in the morning because sometimes at night many flocks would come together in a closure That's what this gate is like because inside the opening of chapter 10 because there was an opening and all the sheep were in and the hired man would lay at the gate and that's why he would sometimes run away when the enemy would come. But in the morning, when the shepherds who'd gotten and gotten a little rest would come, they'd sound their notes, say their word, click their tongue, whatever it was, the sheep would hear and the sheep would come out and follow. What's so critical in the story And what is so important in our lives is learning how to listen to the shepherd. Ears to hear the call of the shepherd. How do you know his voice? Well, it takes time. The shepherd spent days and nights, weeks and months with his sheep. Therefore, he got to know them quite well. And if you want to know the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got to take some time to listen. It doesn't happen in the midst of barrenness. 
a statement that's long helped me is beware the barren, beware the danger of a barren life. If you're not hearing the voice of God, well, there's trouble. And it takes time. And I want to encourage you to be sure you are finding time to be with the sheep. The shepherd, I mean. And with the sheep, you ought to be here. Thank you. But we've got to have time with the shepherd. We've got to hear his voice so that we will know his voice. I talked to you about the ram sheep herder in the Midwest. In that interview, he said, I could step into the sheep pen with all of the sheep asleep and not a muscle would twitch. But if a total stranger put one foot quietly in that sheep pen, pandemonium would break out. Why? Because it takes time to trust in life. And the stranger coming, the sheep don't know him, don't trust him, and it goes crazy. But the one who they know and trust, they don't even lift an eyelid or twitch a muscle. They just go on sleeping because they sense the presence of the one in their life who cares about them. So the voice of Jesus is one that takes some time to get in tune with. But I think there's a second word, and that is the tone of the voice. I've been saying to you week by week that your picture of Jesus really does matter. And so I have to ask the question today, what kind of voice does he have? Does Jesus shout and is he angry? Or do you hear a loving and a caring shepherd? Can he be stern? Well, Psalm 23 reminds us he does have a rod and a staff, and sometimes he has to use those on the sheep. What I want to say to you fundamentally, that the voice of Jesus is a voice of love and of grace and of mercy. You know, sheep lose their way. We know that from Luke 15. It's easy and possible for us to be wanderers. We get busy. We have this thing to do and that thing to do and parents to care for and kids to raise and jobs that are chaotic. And all of a sudden, life just gets out of control. And we look up and we say, we're not close anymore to the shepherd. We've wandered away. But don't forget the final picture of Luke 15. The wandering sheep is the one that Jesus is willing to leave the 99 for to go find. And if today your testimony would be that I've been wandering and I've not been listening and I, I've not been hearing the tender tones of this Jesus who comes to speak to me, I want to just say to you, he's looking for you today. He's calling out for you. Verse 28, Jesus said, no one can snatch them out of my hand. And that's a great thought of his care and his protection. I've also mentioned to you in my few weeks with you that I have what I've come to call a God's scrapbook. There was a day early in my adult life that I found a picture in my scrapbook that troubled me greatly. I, I struggled to think that God really loved me. I struggled to believe that God really wanted to embrace me. I knew in my mind that my name was in the book of life, but I had this picture in the scrapbook that God had a big eraser, and he was watching me. And if I messed up, my name could go. I have to tell you, part of that came from too many left-behind books and movies. I got to tell you, some of that came from sermons that I heard when preachers tried to scare us out of hell, and it made me a nervous wreck. But I want to tell you, there was a day when I got a brand new picture, and it's a picture that is described simply as grace. Oh, is there an eraser? Only one. I hold it. If I want out of God's book of life, God will honor my choice. But Jesus says here in the scripture, he'll do everything to keep you in his grip. He does not want to lose you. This is a picture 
of what grace is all about. I had a, a good morning. I woke up really early today, couldn't sleep, got up, was kind of looking through the notes that I'd written out this week and putting it all together, and I got to this point, and God broke in on my old couch at about 6.30 today. And I was drawn to some words of music. Isn't it interesting how music often gives expression to what we want to say and what we feel? I wrote them down because I want to be sure I don't miss any of them. You probably know these songs. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured. There, where the blood of Christ, the Lamb was spilt. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that is greater than all our sin. And then Helder Lillinus pepped it up just a little bit when he wrote, Wonderful grace of Jesus. Greater than all my sin. How can my tongue describe it? Where shall its praise begin? Taking away my burden, setting my spirit free. Oh, the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Broader than the scope of my transgression. Sing it. Greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus. Praise his name. He's the shepherd, my friends. And the tone of his voice is a tone of grace. I don't know what pictures you have in your scrapbook. I hope you don't have any like my old one. But if you have a picture that's skewed at all today, this would be a great day to get a new picture of what grace is all about. The shepherd who loves you. The shepherd who does not drive you but leads you. The shepherd who, if you might be wandering a bit today, is calling your name and bringing, wanting to bring you back. And yes, if you are even at the well today with all the sheep, and the shepherd says, let's go, and you have to say, I don't have a shepherd. I don't have a voice to follow. I don't know what to do in life. I'm, I'm lost. This could be the morning for you to meet the good shepherd by opening your heart and your life to his transforming grace. Jesus said, I am the gate. I want to bring people in and I want to send them back out. I am the good shepherd. And the Greek word good could really be translated beautiful. And I think I like that even better. I am the beautiful shepherd. My voice is worth following. And my father and I hold you in our hands. Thanks be to God. Father, thanks for Jesus' self-revelations. I don't know at what point today that the picture of the shepherd needs to speak to our individual hearts. Maybe it's a day to just celebrate grace. Maybe it's a day to experience grace. Maybe it's a day to confess, Lord, I've been wandering. I've been busy. I haven't even been looking to try to hear your voice. And Lord, I want to slow down this week and re-engage with you. So, Lord, take the words of Scripture. Take the strong music we've heard today that have pointed us towards our King. Take the recognition of the fact that we need to be led and lead us well this week. Thank you, Lord, for the gathered church. And now, please, go with us as we soon depart.
Let me offer these words as your benediction and your thought for going. Leave here claiming Jesus, the good shepherd, the one with the voice that will lead you. But also leave here declaring that he is our model of how we're going to live our lives this week, interested in the people around us. Oh God, give us eyes to see people and not problems and not projects and not puzzles, but people that we are willing to serve. Oh yes, even willing to lay our lives down for. In the name of the Good Shepherd, we say, Amen. Go in His grace and in His peace. Thank you.